So good evening, everybody. I hope you can. Good evening, good evening. I hope you can hear me live and clear. Uh, if you can hear me, can I see your hand up? If you can hear me loud and clear, you can indicate with the hand going up to confirm that. Good, good, good. Thanks to everybody. And uh, welcome to our webinar specifically for the SEMA program. Our SEMA program is uh, specifically a program that we run in partnership with SEMA Ghana, providing tuition for colleagues who would want to have that important uh, distinguishing qualification to become a member of the SEMA. That is a global qualification. And we're doing it in partnership with SEMA Ghana. And uh, today, as it's a holiday, I wish everybody a happy holiday and welcome you to this uh, brief session. And uh, I have on the call our facilitator for the program who I'll be inviting soon to uh, speak to us specifically on generally understanding what SEMA has to offer to anyone who intends to join and become a member. We'll be doing that in the next few minutes. But before we do that, I just want to uh, bring to your knowledge that as part in partnership with uh, CIMA, we run tuition for CIMA, Ghana pro uh, CIMA programs, specifically the strategic case study, which is the ultimate case study required to qualify as a member, and also the management case study, which is also a second tier case study required to qualify to the final level. And uh, we've been doing this now, and obviously with great outcomes and results. And uh, I'm sure you can see on my screen share uh, an award we re received by one of our students in the last outcome that we had. Very incredible. And we hope to start our programs for the May and August session. And it's part of the reasons why we decided to organize this webinar to bring everybody to understand where we are, where we are going in terms of our program. And then obviously have a way of providing responses to few challenges you may have and make sure that everybody is on board for the May and I guess diet for the CIMA uh, professional qualification exam. So on that note, with this welcoming introduction and maybe with a prayer, I'm sure I need to pray. <laughs> I've not done that, but I think I can go ahead and do that now. Father, we thank you for this meeting. Thank you for this deliberation. We welcome everybody to this discussion and hope that uh, it will be a fruitful engagement as we all seek to improve on our professional qualification. We thank you. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I will now invite my my co-panelist, that is uh, Mr. Osman Musa, who is head of uh, business development at CIMA Ghana. As, apart from CIMA Ghana, he, he has extended portfolios to other countries. Osman, am I right? <laughs> yes, you are right. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, so Osman will take do the do justice to the subject. So I think it's not the first time. The last time we had a deliberation, we had we had this introduction. We we're able to help everybody understand our programs and what CIMA Ghana has to offer. So maybe we have to do a quick overview of that. And once we are done, have an open forum where we can quickly assist colleagues to get a better understanding of maybe get a better response to their challenges. And then we can we can close on that. But today is a holiday, so we don't want to hold anyone for long yeah, exactly <laughs> we can go straight to business so osman the floor is yours i hope you can share your screen now yeah can you see my screen yeah, i think it's clear you can go ahead okay so you can see my screen now right yes it's clear everyone okay. can good so good good evening to us all and thank you for the warm reception and the introduction as he rightly said i look after business development for uh, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Cameroon, and Benin. So our whole um, support from the office is to be able to guide and support you to 
also get through the qualification uh, successfully, uh, hassle-free uh, or hassle-free that we say. Um, today, we're just going to look at how CIMA can help you accelerate your finance career as well. And I'm assuming that all of us here are CA qualified. Am I right? We have some colleagues who are joining us, <laughs> not CA qualified, but also maybe having the master's qualification. So maybe after the the CA route, maybe you want to briefly elaborate on the other route also. Okay, That's then I'll be able to capture all that whilst in the process. Okay, so okay. thank you. Um, Today, I just want us to watch this short video. Can you hear, can you hear the sound? Our story is one of choices. Yes, yes, yes. Choices that have helped us focus on what matters most to make things better. <clears throat> For 100 years, SEMA has been serving management accountants to take businesses further and make them stronger. Our members are moving from trusted business partners to co-pilots of transformation. But disruptive forces are at work. Businesses are faced with radically new technologies. Their markets are going digital. Their customers growing skeptical. Computers are not far from overtaking human potential. The future of businesses will be decided by the capabilities of finance professionals. Our choice is to power a digital skill set and a future ready mindset. The ability to learn, unlearn, and relearn rather than purely technical knowledge will define a finance professional's future success. We enable management accountants to be navigators of disruption and drivers of trust, opportunity, and prosperity in a complex world. Management accountants will have to be early adopters of new technology, adapt to constant change and evolving business models globally, and move from controlling costs to creating value. Our story is one of choices. We have chosen to lead the transformation beyond insights, beyond limits, beyond expectations. This is the future of finance. Welcome. So thank you, welcome. And I'm sure the video has actually captured almost everything in a nutshell within a minute. So they we're going to look at a glance of what CIMA is, what the management accountants is, our CIMA qualification, the exemptions, the competency framework, and then the study options and how you get started. So for those of us who, is, who are now hearing of CIMA, CIMA stands for the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants. We've been around since 1990, so we are over 100 years now. And it takes an agile organization to be able to transcend that number of years and still be very relevant in today's uh, business. In 2017, what we decided to do was in order to truly get our members to be global, because there are some of the continents that no matter the qualification that you have, if you take it there, they do not accept you into the, 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 the finance space in a way. So we looked at the fact that the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, they are the largest in terms of member, uh, membership for public accounting in the world. And CIMA being the largest managing accounting body in the world, the two of us came together to form the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants, which is now the most influential uh, and biggest uh, financial accounting training body in the world. So we have the uh, public accounting unit, which is a CPA side of it, the CPA uh, US, and then the management accounting uh, branch of it, which is a CIMA aspect of it, so that immediately you are able to get our qualifications as well you should be able to uh, find a way to, to, to secure some jobs when you enter the U.S. market. It is actually to get uh, the acceptance and actually get us to be truly, truly global. And this has been a very exciting journey for us. It is still unfolding and building up. And I'm sure by the time we enter into about 
10 to 5 years, 5 to 10 years to come, uh, a lot of the things that they are trying to do in the Americas will, will, will suffice and all of us will, be, uh, will benefit from that. Now, someone asked what is management accounting? So what SEMA actually does is uh, management accounting is financial accounting and more. So we are combining finance, accounting, management, and strategy. So with the SEMA qualification, once you are qualified as a chartered global management accountant, then we know that you have competencies, not just in the technical skills, but the other aspect of the business that you can use to drive and create value for the organization. So the management accountants are able to guide critical business decisions within the organizations, and they provide strategic advice to the business to enable it move the speed at which it has to be and the level that it has to be. They combine both financial and business expertise in order to create, drive, and preserve value for the organization. And of course, they provide strong leadership and managerial skills to be able to support the growth in the organization. And these are skills that all businesses around the world are actually telling us that they need more than ever, especially in the, in the world of, uh, uh, in the VUCA world that we are living in. And by VUCA, I mean very volatile, and certain extremely complex and ambiguous business organizations or environment that we're living in. So you need to be able to, to, to move at that speed to be able to keep up with the things and changes that are happening. Now, in, in, in every four years, we try to review our syllabus. And most of the courses you do in SEMA, especially the case studies, they are all based on real practical issues within the uh, um, uh, industry. So what we did in 2019 when we were reviewing the syllabus was that we spoke to over 5,500 finance professionals across the globe in over 150 countries, including Ghana. And we spoke to a lot of organizations, including MTN Ghana, the Bank of Ghana, and some other, the big fours in Ghana and around the world as well, to be able to find out what are some of the things they are looking out for in the uh, finance uh, 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 professionals and what are some of the things that they think the profession is not providing and should be looked at. So after the research, that was when we came out with the future of finance uh, research learning and that actually informed our current syllabus, which is a 2019 syllabus. And there are a lot of uh, interesting things that we saw in there that have been incorporated into the new syllabus. If you are very interested in reading more about some of these things, you'll be able to get uh, get it on this um, landing page that I've provided where you can have some brief updates on the program. In a summary, what the research told us was that the shape of the finance function is changing because it used to be a bit more uh, hierarchical in the, uh, in the old system. That is where you see the, the triangle here almost full. So you realize that at the bottom level, a lot of people were recruited for data entry. So by data entries, we have a lot of people. And how you, whilst you climb up, the number of people within the finance team reduces. So the higher you climb up, you realize that the people that are employed at higher level in finance begin to shrink. And then we got to the segregated point where they were uh, divided into two. So they employ a lot of people at the down there. But when we get to the middle, we try to move out. That is using the shared services. Then currently, we are in the diamond state. And if you look at the, 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 the ship, you realize that some portion of them are grayed out. And the portions that are grayed out is the effect of technology. Because of the uh, impact of uh, technology within the finance and accounting space, they are reducing the number of lower level recruiting. So if your, your expertise is all about data entry, you are going to be chopped off by the, 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 the technology. And you realize that as they climb up rather, the shape begin to rather expand in a way. And when I go to the next slide, you will see what the current state is. Now, this is a current shape that we have, we have uh, identified. And at the lower level, most of them are just assembling and extracting data and they provide limited insight. So now computers can do that. 
Computers can do a lot of the repetitive things, look into data, sieve it, and then provide you with clean data that you can use to make your analysis. Then when you come up a bit, you realize that the more you are climbing now, the, the pyramid begins to, uh, I mean, expand in a way because you will need more people to look at the things that the data, uh, uh, the machines or the technology have been able to see, to be able to analyze. So at that level, you are looking at people that are more looking into finding insight from the data that have been seeded by the, the machines or technology. And then you move to the third level, we have what we call they are what we call the partner for value. They influence and shape how the organization creates and preserve value. So these are more like the middle level uh, uh, managers in finance team who are coordinating between strategy, that is the, the highest higher level, and then operation, those at the bottom line. At that level, you are getting that place swell because they need a lot of people to be able to make sense to what the uh, machines are, are, are dealing with or what the machines are providing. And that is where the value is. You need to be able to understand what the machines has provided. How do you use what it is provided? How do you then make sense out of it and help the senior managers to be able to take decisions out of the, the, the whole information or insight that you provide? Then when you go to the apex of it, you'll find the, the finance leaders. Those are the CFOs, the, 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 the directors of finances and all those people sitting at the top there. It also shrinks a bit because, of course, as you climb up to the highest level, you have a small number of people going in there because you only have one CFO. You have one director of finance and all that. So at that level, you are looking at leading the team and devising a strategy for the whole organization to be able to thrive and grow. And that is the picture that we are looking at. And this has informed the content that we have built into our uh, syllabus courses. So if you look at the lower level, the things that we look at assembling and extracting and all that, they are things that we deal with at the operational level of the CIMA qualification. Then those are the uh, uh, middle to the, uh, uh, to the lower level, lower to the middle level, they are at the management level. And then the strategic level people will find the people who are taking the highest decision over there. And when you become a member, of course, you will be part of the board and other things that are driving the uh, cost of change within the organization. Now, Mackenzie is telling us that by 2030, up to 375 million people may, may need to switch their occupation or learn new skills. So it means that a lot of the things that we are all hooked up to currently may actually not be um, uh, relevant in the next uh, few years. That is why we keep updating our syllabus to keep our members relevant within the system. And these are some of the things that are impacting the finance space. These are the technologies that are impacting the finance world. We have the cognitive uh, computing. We have the e-memory. We have the visualization. Of course, these days, as a finance person, you need to be able to use data in a pictorial form that helps the people to visualize what you are take, uh, talking about. That helps people to be able to take decisions based on the information you provided for them. And we have process uh, robotics, especially the banks use them a lot. And then we have the cloud computing as well, where we hold a lot of information uh, in, 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 in the cloud just for safety uh, reasons and also not to disrupt our, our, our businesses when one, 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 one uh, computer or something is gone off. So you have advanced analytics as well and blockchain. Blockchain is one of the biggest uh, actually impacts we are having within the banking system and within a lot of the sectors. And so as they are building it on, it will get to a point where you may not need too many auditors to be in the system because blockchain is able to record and keep things and see who comes in and logs in and, and keep all those things. The only thing we need to do is to be able to get the person to understand what the system is doing and they will be able to make meaning out of it and due to some of these things there's a technology we are building in in america and they are pilots in it actually the the uh, for the auditing uh, 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 people so what it does is that instead of doing sample auditing this is going to help you do 100 percent auditing so you will understand where you have leakages where you have issues and you don't do something, you're going to do a 100% audit. And these are systems that we are going to use 
very soon. It's just a matter of time. It will get to us here in Ghana. And you can see the impact of technology as well, even in our churches. Now the, the finance people in the, in the, in the church uh, have to deal with Momo, have to deal with the transfers and all those things. It's no more carrying cash to the, uh, to the church. You can do Momo. And that is telling you that you as an accountant or a finance person, you need to be able to prepare yourself to adapt to the changing needs of the environment and be able to stay relevant within that environment. Now, after we've looked at all these impacts, then we decided to say we have this particular pillar that sits that all the courses of the CIMA program sit upon or relies upon and what we call the competency framework. It is this framework that guides the way, the content that we provide and how we train our members. Now, the, the, the main uh, 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 skill or competency we are looking out for is a technical skill. By the time you say you are a chartered management accountant, you should understand the normal technical accounting skills. So you should, you should understand how to do your balancing, all the IFRS and all the things that a normal an, uh, uh, accountant will do. That is a technical skill that you will need. Now, if you have got the technical skill, how do you transition the technical skills into your business setting? There are times you go into your board meeting, you realize that you are the only finance person in there. You are the only chartered accountant in there. The CEO, the COO, and marketing, and all those people who are going to depend on you to take decisions have no clue about the numbers. So if you are just rattling the numbers to them, they will become even more confused. So we are getting SEMA members to understand how do you tell the story behind the numbers to be able to help your CEOs, help your directors to take decisions and meaningful decisions out of the reports that we are giving them, not just churning out information to them. Then we are looking at the people skill. At the workplace, you are working with people and you are not working in silos. And that is even the more reason why we brought in a case study to be able to find a way to synchronize the things that you have learned to be able to work together. So at the workplace, you need to understand how do you engage people? How do you understand emotional intelligence? Because if you come in today and Kofi is always happy, but today Kofi is not happy, and you feel and think that I just have to go about my normal duties. Kofi that day, forgetting that he's not happy, there's something that is probably wrong with him, and you must find a way to deal with it. If you leave it hanging as a finance director or CFO, the Kofi's effect alone can impact your productivity for that particular day because she, he's not happy or maybe something is bothering him and you have not actually come to show that care, to talk to him and understand how do you support him to be able to go on. Mind you, somebody is depending on Kofi's work to be able to move on. And so if that is not uh, worked around, it will impact your output. And that is what we're training our members to understand emotional intelligence and how to deal with people. And then of course, you need to have the leadership skills. They said, if you, are, if you are running and no one is following you, then you are just taking a stroll. And in the finance space, you need to show courage. You need to show leadership because you are holding the torchlight and guiding everybody, including the CEO, as to what they have to do because Money is, 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 is the whole power of the, of, the, of the organization. So you need to be able to have that kind of leadership skills to be able to carry people along, to buy into the vision and then get a way to get that vision uh, materialized. Then at the center of it all, we said that is a digital skills. You need this particular skill because things are changing very quick and fast. And I know some of us within the government sector used to always complain and there are, there's now the gift mix that you have to use, whether you like it or not. When they brought it earlier on, a lot of people were just sabotaging and thinking they wouldn't use it. But by and large, a lot of the government institutions are using that. You are forced to use it. And whether you like it or yes, you will still have to use it. And in the space that you work in private sectors too, there are digital things that you need to learn. And these days, we are training SEMA members to see digitalization as a, as a source of taking them away from repetitive and redundant work so that you can concentrate more on strategic uh, issues in the organization and leave the redundant work to the machines to deal with whilst you work on strategy and in creating, driving, and preserving value for the organization. And at the, at the whole 
uh, certain of it, they are all certain under ethics, integrity, and professionalism. So if you see a SEMA qualified person, we expect that these particular female competency are found in that one person. And that gives you the confidence to be able to go into any area that you want to work with. And when we change the syllabus, there are some of the few topics we introduce because of the findings that we, we, we saw. So we introduced data strategy, digital technologies, data analytics, digital costing, digital literacy, business models. So those of us who start from the management level under P, uh, P2 performance, you will see business models over there, how to use different business models to be able to, to gauge and, and move your uh, organization. And of course, the cyber security is a big issue now. There are times that you go into the ministries, especially the government sectors, you have, for the cleaners, they have no clue about what cybersecurity and data protection is. And if you don't get your team as a finance person in your organization to understand the impact of cybersecurity and how to guard against it, someone just walks into your cleaner and gives a person a pen drive and probably maybe give her about 200 or 1,000 cities and says, yeah, just try and slot this into boss's computer system when you are cleaning. She doesn't know what it is because she feels though someone has just given me a thousand cities, that is, which is even more than maybe my monthly salary. And I just needed to put something in a, in a, in a system. And she doesn't see anything wrong with that. But by the time all of you would have got into the office, your information have been siphoned out. And before you say, Jack, the whole system is hacked. That is the importance of getting to understand what cybersecurity is and, and the critical issues around it. Another big issue is also the integrated reporting. And like I said earlier on, we, we uh, one of our team members is leading the board on the uh, international integrated reporting uh, issues as our, our CIMA CEO leads that aspect. And the whole idea is to get finance people begin to move away from just actually reporting on financials. Because research tells us that about 80% of the value of your organization is not sitting on the balance sheet. But a lot of finance and accounting people do not know how to account for those intangibles. So they, are, they leave it out. But if you find ways to understand how do you get all this integrated into your reporting so that you have a holistic view of the financial health and heartbeat of the organization that helps you to propel into getting the organization to where you want to be. And that is one of the key things that we are propagating a, a, a across the world. And I'm sure very soon, a lot of us will begin to uh, inculcate it into our reporting and those captures things around even ESGs and all those things that are very important in our current uh, system. Now, the whole SEMA program is a 16 paper before you call yourself a chartered global uh, management account. We have four levels. At each of the level, you have four papers. The first level is the um, uh, certificate level, which is the lower level. That's the certificate level. You have four objective papers there. That is for those who do not have any background in business, they enter from that level. Then the next level is the operational level. The operational level, you have three objective papers, and then you have one case study. So you have managing finance in digital world, you have management accounting, and you have financial reporting, after which you then write the money, uh, operational case study exam. At that level, you are dealing with things that have to do with budgeting, budget implementation, and all those things at the lower level. And your role over there will be a finance officer. Then from there, we will award you a diploma in management accounting. You move to the management level, you will do perform uh, managing performance, you do advanced management accounting, advanced financial reporting, and then afterward, you will write the management case study exam. Now, from that platform, your role is a, 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 a finance manager, and you are dealing or interfacing between the operation at the lower level and those who are uh, strategic at the, at the top level. So you break down strategy into operational bits to get the people to be able to implement. And you deal with things that also have to do with uh, costing, cost strategies, and all those things, investment, appraisals, and all those things, you'll find it at that uh, level. Then at the final level, which is a strategic level, you will do strategic management, risk management, 
and financial strategy. Thereafter, you write the strategic case study exam. At that level, your role is more like a CFO and your thinking is more long-term, more strategic and direct as to how to get the whole organization will continue to move. So that is the level where you need to get to before we can say you will become a chartered global management accountant. So after you have written the strategic case study, then you will need to prove to us at least three years work experience in finance or accounting before you are awarded the chartered global management accountant designation. That, that experience can be gained before, during, or after you joined us. So if you've already been working for 10 years, that's all. All you need to show up is at least proof of five, uh, three years work experience within a finance and accounting space. And then we award you the exemption. So that is the beauty of, of, of that. Now, if you have a master's in accounting or a degree in accounting, then you will be starting from the management level. So you are exempted from Eight, eight papers, which is a certificate and operational level, and you start from the management level. So you will do eight more papers. If you use a finance leadership program where you use continuous assessment, it means you do the learning and assessment of the objectives in the learning management system, after which you will use the knowledge to go and write the case study exam. Then you move on to the strategic level and you do the same thing. But for those of us who are already CA qualified, if you are a chartered a, a, a accountant that is ICAG, not all other, it's not open to all other uh, chartered accountants, it's for ICAG alone, you will be writing the strategic case study. At least for now, that is the status quo. Things could change, but for now, that is the status quo. You, you will write the strategic um, case study uh, at the final level. So all you need to do is do one case study and then you are done. But that case study is not a syllabus on its own. It is based on the three courses at that level. So the tuition provider early will take you through some of the, the main salient uh, things you will need at each of the, the courses. Then it prepares you to go and sit for the case study exam. Now the case study exam is, um, is taken four times a year. We have February, May, August, and November each year. And it's a three hour paper. We actually give you the case study at least six weeks to the exam. In the exam room, the case study will still be there because we're not looking for true and poor. You need to be able to assimilate, understand, and then provide solutions to the issues that are happening because they are very, very practical. You will not find, define something or what is this, no. You are given a problem, and you are the senior finance officer or the CFO of the company, if you are at the strategic level, you would have to tell them what decision they need to take to solve that problem. Then it's an open-ended question, like I said, and after you have finished, it is marked by uh, examiners, and within six weeks, your results will be available as well. And then it's based on a case study scenario, with information that is released, like I said, six weeks to the exam. And these are real true information, just that we remove the companies or the, the industries' uh, names or things that can link it to them. And then you proffer solutions to them. Um, we also have, uh, what to call it, your tuition provider will provide you with some tuition uh, preparation for the case study and all that. And you can write the exam online or go to an exam center. Our exams are written online since 2015. Even if you go to the exam center, you'll be given a computer to use. So you, you, will, you will do everything on a computer. If you do from home, the only difference is that you are using your own laptop. And sometimes you are more conversant with your own keyboards and all those things. So if you have good internet, reliable power, I think the, 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 the best of the experience would be to, to, to do it from home. But with that one, uh, in the three hours, you cannot move out of the uh, uh, place you are. You must be alone in the, in the room and no one can come in. If anybody comes in, there will be an invigilator with you who can see you, you can see, he can speak to you. If you are going against the uh, exam rules, he will end the exam and go. 
and that is the rule that you have. But if you go to an exam center and maybe you want to go to the washroom, they will be able to allow you pause it. You go to the washroom and you can come back. So those are the difference. You look at the convenience and inconvenience and see whichever uh, suits you. But there are good numbers that have a good uh, uh, experience with writing from home or office. Some to have terrible experience because their internet got disrupted somewhere around the, along the line. But if it is something that is not by your fault, immediately you call us and inform us. They will log a ticket there. Even the invigilator with you would have sent his report. And then we can look at it. If it is not you breaking the rules, we will reschedule you to go to an exam center and write. That is the following, uh, the following week. <clears throat> I've already spoken about the exemptions. So MBA holders, you have uh, eight exemptions now. Um, some of them, we used to give them 11, but now they have just updated the, the syllabus. So don't look at the 11 exemptions here. Then the ICAGs, you get 15 exemptions. So you do only one uh, case study over there. Now with the fees for registration for the ICAG route, it's a package on its own. We do not charge exemption fees since um, 2020. So the registration, the um, entry onto the pathway, and then one attempt at the case study, which is a strategic case study, is £1,250. And uh, we have been able to push for some discount, which ended the uh, last December. But I think we're able to further push them to allow us to rope in some few of you uh, till the end of um, uh, what do you call it, uh, seventh March. But we're still trying to see if they can give it to us to the end of um, the month. Other than that, we'll, we will revert back to uh, either the original fee or we may get uh, a, a further discount by it to be higher than the current one we are giving. So the current um, uh, discount is £695. So if you want to take it now, and some of us have been given um, uh, the invoices already. So if you have it already, you need to pay at least before, uh, what do you call it, 12 a.m. on the 8th of March, which means Thursday midnight, you should have paid. Other than that, the system will revert it back to, if we are not able to secure the extension, it means that you would have to pay the full amount. <clears throat> Then for the masters, if you want to use a finance leadership program, there are two options. If your university is Legon, KNUST, UCC, Gimpa, um, um, what do you call it, UEW, and you have finished between 2019 and then this year, then you fall within the MOU. Instead of paying £2,438, you will pay £731. The £2,438 include VAT from the government. It's actually 2000 but the government takes uh, VAT on it, which brings it to £2,438. And with that one, because of where you are starting, you have access to the learning platform, you have access to all the models, you have access to tuition guidance, plus the exam included in it for one year access. So if you are starting at the management level, and you start in the system, they have broken the subject into topics. And after each topic, you are given assessment. Once you finish all the learning and assessment for the objective test, you are now allowed to go and take the case study exam, which is the management case study. Then after, after that, you move on to the strategic level, do the learning and assessment for the three objectives in the system as well at your own pace. Then after that, you go and take the strategic case study. If you're able to do it within a year, that's it, you are done. I have very few people who have been able to get that done within eight, eight months, and it's possible. So it depends on your zeal and your commitment and what you are looking for to achieve uh, within the shortest possible time. So are we prepared for the future of finance? The only thing I want to leave you with is the fact that there is only one way to keep up with change. You need to learn and learn and relearn in a continuous loop because things keep changing. And so make a decision today and take a leap with us into the future of finance, what would help you also get more exposure into the global uh, space of finance and accounting with your CA qualification as well, which is also very strong and good. 
you add a SEMA to it and you, you can enter everywhere you want to, to go to in the world. And I would always encourage you, if you have the technical one of it, which is more like the uh, tax audit and assurance, you add the SEMA bit of it, which looks at strategy, risk, and management and operation, then you become a truly a 360 finance professional who can find his feet anywhere in the world that he or she goes. Uh, my contact over here, you can always call me or WhatsApp me uh, when you need assistance regarding SEMA, and I'll be happy to talk to you and engage you and assist you as well. So if there's anything you need clarity on, you can call me on the 0268 128789. Or you can email me at osman.musa at aicpa.sima.com. If you want to find out more about the program, you go to www.aicpa-sima.com and you will find all the information over there. Thank you so very much for your time today. I will leave it and open up for any um, questions. Thank right, you, Ellie. Right. Back to you. Yeah, so I think somebody was asking a question about the, uh, whether they can start the process today and do the payments by the 8th of March. Mm. Yes, um, that means I need to work with speed for you. We'll be able to do it instantly and then you can go in and pay. Yeah, so maybe if anything at all, by hopefully tomorrow is a working day. Yeah. You can put everything together and then hopefully we can submit before close of day and then I'm sure Osman will help with the final approval yeah. and then payment can be done before the Friday, yeah, as we said. Good. So somebody also said, how do you opt for the online and the home, the dedicated center? How do you do that? Yeah, so when you are scheduling the exam, the, the, the will, you have an option for online and you have an option for uh, exam center. So you will choose the option. If you choose an exam center, based on your address, all the exam centers within your location will show up and you have their details, you can talk to them and you look at whichever one you want to use and you can select book. You will book the time, you will book the, the actually the date and the time and the venue you want to write. So all this is under your control. And with the online one, you can write it at any time within the uh, uh, exam period. So we have three days for the exam. So yeah. for the May, for instance, if you want to sit in May, the case study will be out on the 5th of April. Yeah. When it's out, then they would, um, uh, Ellie will take you through and all those things. Then the exam dates, the exam dates will be normally the third week of, um, third week of um, uh, May. Yeah. May. So yeah. in the third week of May, then you can do the, the exam. We we'll give you three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So whichever day that is convenient to you, you will select the day, you select the, the exam center and the time that is convenient for you. If it's an online, even if you want to write 12 midnight, you can do it. Yeah. 9 p.m., you can do it. But if it's an exam center, by uh, 5 p.m., everybody's closed. So you have to do between 8 and 5 p.m. But if it's an online, you can do it at any time, 3 a.m. Once you know that's the time that's comfortable for you, you have that flexibility. Good, 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 good. So another question is, uh, what's the pass mark? <laughs> for okay, the case so study. For yeah. the case study, we mark it over 150. So yes. for the uh, strategic case study, you have three issues to deal with. we call three sections. Each section have uh, a question and maybe a sub question, maximum two sub questions. So maybe you may have a main question and maybe A and B. And you have one hour each for each of the section. And they are all time because they made it, they made it look very real. So if in one hour you are not done with that particular session, it will automatically move you to the next uh, uh, section because they want to work within time. The assumption is that for example, you could get a question that you are walking up the staircase and you have met the director of finance. And he says, okay, Kofi, I'll be going into your board meeting in about three hours. I want you to give me your, your input, whether we should have our IT outsource or have it in-house. He's done. And these are the things you do at the office work. So you are now going to tell your boss based on your own analysis. I may see that we should have it outsourced so we can concentrate more on what we do 
and can be more productive, but I may be looking at the, the risk of giving our data to a third party. So you analyze it in a way and then send back to him within that time period that he has given you. You can say you want to do it in three days. So they have mimicked it in such a way that it looks very practical. So that is how it is. Good, good. And I'm sure once you join the tuition, it will help you to exactly. those things, right? Somebody said, how much is registration for tuition? I think I will want to uh, deal with that now immediately as we proceed. So the we are actually going to start tuition this month. Normally, uh, Dresden will come in April. So the expectation is that we are going to start tuition on the 23rd of March. So hopefully by 23rd of March, we should uh, begin uh, business. Obviously, way in advance before the release of the pricing. So from 23rd of March, we should be able to start our lectures for both level, that is the management level and the strategic level. And these are the fee shadows for the strategic level. Uh, the full package is 1,500 which includes all materials uh, relevant and even some CBE exam that we normally assist students with so that they can rehearse the, 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 the speed that they will need to be able to pass because it's computer-based. So you need some typing skills to be able to handle issues. So for management case study also, it's 1,005. But for those doing CA, it's straight away, you are writing only the strategic case study. So we do a single lecture for that program so that you can be able to write. And uh, the good news is that at ASPA, we only charge you once till you qualify. So what it means is that once you pay your fee and join our program, you never pay until you, you are chartered as a CIMA member. So it's a one-off fee. And regardless of how, whenever we are doing tuition, like we had for last night, those who registered for the what's the name, the, let me get it right, the August died, they were also able to join us for the November at no fee at all because the precinct was the same. So we took them through that precinct twice and they were able to write the exam. So those of you joining us this uh, May, it doesn't matter whether you are writing May or August, once you are able to pay your fee, this fee takes you throughout to the process where you are able to finish because you have two windows for this particular precinct that is coming. The precinct that is coming for May will be written for both May and August. Is that okay? So we'll provide tuition for it for those who intend to write May and then for those who intend to write August, we are going to do that. So it's a one-time fee payable and it takes you throughout the diet. Is that clear? So that is for our program. As I emphasized, we are starting 23rd of March. Hopefully, prison comes in April and exam will kick off in the third week of May. Exactly. Good. So there are some other questions that I want to deal with. So I'm sure uh, Osman will also help with that. Somebody said, after qualifying, after applying for CIMA, are you required to be paying membership fees and how much is it? Yeah, um, that's a subscription. Subscription. Like annual subscription. Any other, yeah, annual subscription. So if you're a student, you pay £139 yearly. Yeah. But those who are fully qualified, they pay uh, 349. But so majority of them, majority yeah. of them, their organizations pay for them. Yeah. So being a member, that is the applicable fee once you are qualified. Right. So please, can I choose the exam center and use my own laptop as at the center? <clears throat> are they allowed to use their own laptops at the center? I don't think no. that is. That is not workable. <laughs> yeah, so you once you choose the because they ask their platform is different. They have some software that we have put on it. So if you yeah. are going there, they can uh, 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 transfer that to your machine. So yeah. you have to use it. The, the the best you can do is maybe if you have a portable keyboard and you think you are not com uh, comfortable with this, you can go along with your uh, portable keyboard. But that one depends on the discretion of the uh, uh, uh exam uh, uh guide over there okay okay so i think gabby said he sent his application but i've not got a response yet so gabby quickly okay, I'm sure i just got you just forwarded it so i got it yeah so so of my osman due to the pressure to pay <laughs> i'm mm. sure people hit the deadline obviously mm. if we can wrap up with some of the outstanding yeah. 
the registration. I'm sure maybe he just said, because I know I have dealt with all those that came. But I will work on this one tonight. Okay. Mm. okay. So somebody has a long question here. He said, I registered through the MBA route somewhere last year and went through a significant part of the model. However, thanks to work, I couldn't finish the entire learning models and couldn't sit for the exam as well. My subscription ended and I'm looking forward to sitting for the exam this time around. So my question is, do I have to write the objectives or I can go straight and write a case study like anyone else? So I well, think so it depends. It depends yeah. on the paper that you, you wrote. So if you have completed all the models at that level and okay. you have finished all the objectives, or if you were exempted from it, then you go to the case study. But if you were not, you would have to finish the papers that you had there before you can move on. But of course, you have an option to either transfer to the finance leadership where you do not have to go and sit all the objectives one by one. Then you do yeah. the learning for whichever papers that were left over there. Then you can go and write a case study exam. Okay, so somebody said, do I lose the exemption or pay another 695 if probably I fail at the first attempt? I think that one is a big no. So no. you the exam, the exams yeah. if you are able to, if you fail for the first attempt. But yeah. the 695 covers your annual subscription as a student member, covers your exemption as a student member, and also you are able to write the exam for the first attempt. So we expect that you have to pass it once at a go. But if you have not been able to do so and you have to rewrite, then you pay for the exam for the fee. Exam cost. Mm. Exam fee which is 270, uh, 287 pounds. Yeah, which is 287. So that's for the reset. Mm -hmm. So you push yourself. I know quite a number who do and pass it once and for all. And that's good. Definitely. So as an ACC member, what do I need to do to get the designation? So what, what is the option for SCCA members? Yeah, so the SCCA members mostly advise them to use the finance leadership so that they can do the learning for the objective and just go and set two case study exam. Other than that, you have more exams to write uh, unless you, you have ICAG membership. So I, I think a, quite a number of them from the beginning use that uh, strategy. They went for the ICAG and then came to use it for the, the CMA. Think, yeah, so it's better with ACC, you go for CA membership then. <clears throat> I think now there's a big change now. You cannot get, I think based on the change in our our our, our laws or our act, uh, ACC members are required to write some papers before now giving admission. So that's that, like CMA members. Yeah. yeah, just like CMA members. So that law has changed and then I'm sure maybe <clears throat> have to think of that and see the way forward yeah somebody is also saying that uh, let me see which other one before maybe i allow those who want to ask direct questions maybe want to come on board so let, let's go towards that approach so those who want to maybe directly speak to us uh we can do that in some brief minute and we shut down or he ajiman any question you want to ask a live question or he ajiman you want to do that. Raymond, if you are also ready, you can do that. And then Lady R, if you are ready. Raymond, go ahead. Hello, good evening. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Osman. Um, my yeah. question is on the online portrait um, session. He, he made mention of having an invigilator if you opt for the home or office um, option. Please, can you yeah. kindly take that one again? Yeah, I and think... I would like to know. Uh, my second yeah. question is on, on, on the collaboration with the CPA in the US. So does it mean having to, um, qualify for this, um, exams? Um, you wouldn't, even if you if you get a chance to work in the US, you will not have to sit for the CPA. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you. So with the proctor, um, like I said, you have them with you, so you can engage them. And if there's anything wrong, you'll be engaging them. If if you go outside the, the, the rules, they will just end the exam and go. So you will definitely have somebody with you during the exam. Then with regards to the CPA, the, the other side of it is a bit uh, complicated. So if because of our, our, our major, what they do is that if you have the CPA, you come and write the final case study to get the Chartered Global Managing Accountant. Now, when you finish with the CMA, 
you have two designation. The ACMA is the original designation that the CIMA will give you, which is the CIMA UK. The CGMA came together as an award by the AICP and CIMA together as a body. So that when you go into that system, you will be recognized as such. But that doesn't make you a CPA, just like a CPA doesn't become a CGMA automatically. But with their system, they have 50 states. And before you become a CPA, you must go through one of the states in order to become a CPA. So you go through a state based on their laws and their rules of how, what you need to satisfy before you become a CPA, you go through it. When you are done with that, then AICPA, we, we, we do the uniform exam. And the uniform exam is what all the states, after you finish all the conditions, you must write the uniform exam before you can be called a CPA. That is what we administer. So for now, because of the uh, small, small uh, uh, rules and all that, it will take time to navigate around all that. Unlike CIMA bit of it, where you don't need to go to any different, it's just a one, a direct route. But for now, if you go into the system, you will be recognized and you can use that qualification to work as a finance uh, uh, a business partner, finance professional and all that, but not tax and audit because they are also building a labor law, which they are shaping now. And I think they are engaging Congress from that point of view. So what they are saying is that into the future, what they want to do, the CPAs uh, part of it, the CPAs will handle only audit, tax and assurance. And then they use the CGMA members to handle any other thing, which they call finance business partners, which means that you will run things, actually run the whole business sector and leave the the technicalities and the processes of looking audit and all this thing to the CPAs, but you are the real drivers of change and drivers of value for the whole economy. So until they get all those things uh, done, you also, you also have some of these things, but you can call yourself a CPA, just like you can also say you are a CPA. So because you are an AICP member, you become a CGM automatically. You must write the one paper. But I think the good thing is that in the past, some people go there, even with your similar qualification, when you apply for jobs, you don't get. But for now, because they are pushing that agenda over there, there are a good number of people who are working with their similar qualification. Some even have other international uh, accounting qualification, which is very, very popular around all of us. But when you get to the US, they do not care about it. It is either what they know or nothing. So that is the, the beauty of it, of the partnership. Good, good, good. Then we have uh, Fred. I think, thank you, Raymond, for your question. We also have Fred. And uh, I think if Fred is there, he can come up with this question. And then there's one iPhone, but I'm not sure of the name. If that person is also ready, you can come up with your question. And then I have some few more questions in the chat box, if any. Yeah. So somebody said, I joined the webinar uh, halfway. Can we get the documents? that will be needed. Yeah, so I'm sure we'll do a quick overview and then we'll shut down. But there are some two hands up. If Fred is not ready, we have Rachel, and then I can do an overview and then we go. Rachel, any question? Rachel. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Sorry, wow. I joined in a bit late. Okay. But I overheard a facilitator mentioned that uh, those who would want to join the uh, management level uh, by right he usually advises them to go the financial leadership program route <clears throat> um so i want to find out does it mean your your um, program does not create uh, that avenue for those who are writing the objectives to also partake in the online studies, please. Thank you. Yes, uh, Osman, can you deal with that for me? <laughs> um, I'm not really, I think she's directing it to you because we have two routes actually. So it depends on you, the individual. The yeah. traditional route, you pay 99 pounds for registration. Then if you are getting eight exemptions, we award you the eight exemptions. You don't pay for exemptions. As in when you write the exam, which means that with a traditional route, you will write all the eight papers individually. And for the objectives, they are written on demand every day. 
Anytime you feel I'm ready to write the exam, you go and book, you write it, and you'll get your results that same day before you leave the exam room. If you fail, you know. If you pass, you know. Then you continue. If you fail it 10 times, you'll pay for the cost 10 times. But if you are using the uh, finance leadership program, we have built the content, the model, the study guide for self-tuition. So it's designed for self-tuition. Even though a few people still need some additional handheld uh, holding, but it's designed for self-tuition. You go into it, they've broken the subject into topics. The idea actually is the fact that we realize a lot of the professional bodies, we use multiple choice to examine you and it encourages to and poor. So they decided to use that platform to say that instead of trying to know that I'm going to pick maybe advanced management account and learn it for three months and go and poor under one hour, 30 minutes, we have broken them down into learning broader bite. So after each topic, you are assessed, but you are giving a mini case study that is helping to prepare your mind for the bigger one. And with that one, you are not under pressure to chew and pour. You need to assimilate and understand it. And when I compare the two, those who use the finance leadership, they finish faster than those who use the traditional. Because you are always, and also the fact that the finance leadership gives you a subscription period. So if you pay, say, 2400 which includes all the exam and everything in one year, you will do everything to try and push yourself to go far than someone who just said, oh, I'll write it. That's when people use 10 years to write exam. It's not encouraging to be sitting on a professional course for 10 years. <laughs> you get it. Yeah. So, so the aspect of we providing guidance on <laughs> it in terms of the, even though, yes, there are videos that can help you to self, uh, to tutor yourself, to get yourself ready to write. But we are considering that op op option where we could also provide some support for those who wants to still want our help. We are still preparing. Yeah, but it's not it's not going to be easy because you don't have a lot of numbers who are yeah. actually going through that. So it becomes difficult to do some uh, what do you call it tuition specifically to us that. And because it's uh, it's quite Libra and everybody at their own pace wants to join, it becomes difficult to manage. But we'll think through, see what response we can provide for that. In terms of those who need help specifically for the for the for that particular program, why not we can see what we do. Richard, uh, thank you for your question. I hope we've answered you. Good. Then we have uh, a separate link. So you should be my last uh, person, then I can move on. Okay, thank you. Please, can I be here? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so my question is directed to Osman. I wanted to find out. I have registered, I have registered and paid for all the exemptions yet to register for the exams. Now, I am going to, I'm relocating now from Ghana to the UK this month. Is there anything I need to do before the exam state or when I'm registering and picking the location where I am? And that will be uh, okay. Thank okay, you. so the, our, our exam is a global platform. Once you have, if you have scheduled the exam already, you can just reschedule it when you get to where you are. Once the deadline for exam schedule is not due, you can reschedule. So at least you still have some time when you get to UK and settle and all those things because exam is in May. So the deadline is at least it's already open, but the deadline should be somewhere around um, uh, first week in May. At least you should have scheduled the exam by first week in May. So when you get to UK, you do not need to change your address or whatsoever. When you log in and you are booking the exam, you get to the exam center, your address will already be there. All you need is to clear it and put in wherever you are. If it is London, Central, wherever it is, all the centers around that side will come. Then you just choose a center. And when you are going, you need to carry two IDs, either your passport uh, and any other uh, identification. You need at least two to be able to do that. Or if you have very good internet in your cubicle or school or your house or office, you can just do it online and you don't have a problem at all. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So thanks to everybody who joined this session. We thank you all for making the time. There's some Hannah, Leslie, and then Rabia too. Maybe those are two people we could pick. Leslie, any question? 
Hello, Leslie. Hello, hello, Leslie. Right. So I think we can we can conclude now. So thanks to Osman, who has been our main facilitator, always available to answer questions and always at our service regarding the CIMA program. We are grateful for the opportunity once more again to interact with our students. And uh, we also want to just remind everybody that our tuition program for the case study, both the management and strategic case study, as I said, starts from the 23rd of March. Uh, hopefully, we expect to start that prior to the release of the precinct for both the strategic and the management case study. And uh, for those who are yet to complete your registration process, we hope that we can finalize things tomorrow, hopefully. And then, obviously, as indicated by Osman, we can wrap up on the 8th. That is Friday. We can finish up and make sure that we are done with all the registration process. We hope to see an extension of the, the deadline for payment to the end of the month. Once that is sorted out, I'm sure we'll update everybody. Osman will get me the relevant update and then we can notify everybody. But as I said, we need to try as much as possible to wrap up things between tomorrow, Friday, and then we should be fine. So Osman is reachable. Osman, can I can you share your screen so that you can pick your contact also? Okay. All right. So I've also put in the chat box the link okay. to the, the whole uh, uh, exam structure so you can find details of the syllabus. Someone asked about that. So you can use that to be able to see. Yeah. The, my number, let me just mention 0268-128789. Zero two six eight one two eight seven eight nine. I've also put it in the chat just in case. Okay. So Thank what we we'll so do is that what we we'll do is that the video will be available so that anyone who is interested in playing back all that has been said, you can play back and get your full graph. So thanks to everybody. It's a holiday, and we wish you everybody a good holiday. Thank you. Happy Independence Day. All right. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye.